All right, welcome to this week's episode of Love Summon. And hopefully by the time this video has dropped, we're gonna be on our next camping trip. And we'll be producing content that we kind of like making, which is our travel stuff. But for right now, we're still home doing some maintenance. Some in-between maintenance for our camping trips because sometimes when you use things, they just need to be cleaned, right? Absolutely. And you know, if there's one thing our channel is known for, it's probably our checklist. And if you wanna check out the full checklist, we'll have a link down below. But you know, we pr improve these things all the time. When we find new products that might be of interest, we like to try them out. Or if things break or if things, whatever we do, we're constantly adding them. And that's the big difference between our checklist and say the ones that are uploaded by a corporate site or something like that. They, they just upload them and here they are and blah, blah, blah. Ours are always being improved. And so this time we were gonna show you a couple different improvements that we've made to our and annual we'll, maintenance checklist. And we'll see how they turn out. Plus we'll even check out the installation of our Easy Start, how mm -hmm. that looked. Right. And maybe even test that in the confines of our driveway to make sure we can run that easy start off our generator. That would be interesting. All right, let's do it. The first product that we're gonna talk about is this toilet seal lubricant. And we, a couple of years ago, had to replace our toilet seal. And I'm convinced it's because we didn't use something like this and our toilet seal dried out. You reach that point in the, any project where you're like, oh, I'm gonna have to do it right. And so or I do it do, do a different method. Yeah, do something different. So I decided to, pull the toilet apart it's held with these rings take the bowl off you can see the bowl is now completely off the pedestal and thus the gasket it's not this little part this little part here was the broken ripped part and this is what i was actually trying to pull so you were trying to pull th that whole big gasket out using yeah. a tool what kind of idiot on the internet says to just reach in and re open the ball reach in pull it out with glove you're not gonna pull this out. So well, this is, anyway. Anyway, we achieved our end goal and we think we found the part yep. to replace it with. Yep, we have. So what looks like it's wrong with it because we weren't holding any water at <clears throat> all. Right, it's just through age, it cracked. That's why this part came out, there was a crack in it. Okay. That's why this part, as soon as I reached in, it was able to pull this part out super easily. Okay, so that was where it was leaking. That's where it was leaking, yep. Okay. So it was cracked and we're gonna order the new part, clean everything up. Yep. And, we'll and the important thing I learned is that they say that, um, go ahead and lubricate this once a year. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And so we're gonna give this a shot and see how it does. It's supposed to condition your toilet seal and it's also supposed to prevent sticking and maybe hopefully get that ball moving a little bit better as well. So that's what we're gonna do. And they recommend doing this at least three times during the season at the beginning during the middle of the season, which is now, and also when you winterize. So we'll see how it goes. So we're gonna pour this into the toilet and put in enough to cover the steel completely and you leave it in for eight hours. They say the longer you leave it in, the better the results. And so we'll see how it goes. Right, they say to pour in a quarter bottle, but. That seems a little excessive to me. So yeah, you just need to coat the seal. I, I think would, that's, that's I, a marketing ploy right there to get you to use more of their product. Right, exactly, so we're gonna see how it goes. And it's a little dark because we're charging battery and I think that's probably enough so you can see our new lights it's really brightened things up and it's also brightened up things in the bathroom as well we have left the lubricant in the toilet for almost a full day so we're gonna see what it does and whether it works all right that felt really smooth so I think that's a winner. All right, highly recommend the product then. Highly recommend the product. All right, we're gonna keep this on our maintenance list. Absolutely. So one of the first Love Subbing videos we ever made was this one up here, in which I show you how I get up on the ladder to get onto the roof of the Airstream. And the way I do it, there's a couple of different ways, but I use the rain rail, the stainless steel rain, rain rail that goes over the door. I put a little towel and lean my ladder up against that railing right there get up on the roof. Well, if you notice in the other video when they put the easy start in, he did it a little bit differently. So he had it farther down. And I think he was using the awning cover. Yeah, I don't like cover. doing I don't like doing that. This is the way I like doing it. You can do it your way. All right, let's get up on this roof. Always step on the ribs only and never step on the ribs on the end cap, either on the front or the back because there's no ribs, even though there's rivets there, there's no ribs. Also, I just saw a question asked on the Airstream Facebook page about whether you wax the white roof. We don't. You can if you want. We don't. 
All right, so what's some of the equipment that we're going to need? We're going to need some safety glasses. Got them. With some gloves. Got them. A holder for your screws, because you don't want those screws to go bouncing off your roof. Got that. Screwdriver. Got that. Your cleaning product. Yep. And a brush. Yep. So I'm going to hand all of that to you, and we're going to get this started. All right, let's do it. It doesn't hurt to have a knee pad, too. That's just a gardening knee pad that we have acquired over the years. Notice he's only stepping where there are rivets. It's kind of like a little game of twister up here. And of course it goes without saying, you should only do this when it's dry. Absolutely, if it's wet, it's very, very slick. And we've made sure before we open this up that the power is off to the trailer. Yes. Game of Twister. The other thing we're going to do is as soon as we get this off, we're going to hand it down and wash it real good. Yeah, the coils look, do look like they need to be cleaned. I think the whole thing needs to be cleaned. Yeah. That's what we're going to be doing. Yep. Let's do it to it. Supposedly the stuff you don't need to rinse off, that you just sort of brush it in and the foam will take care of the Supposedly you're supposed to be an HVAC technician to do this too. I'm not sure that's necessary, but we're going to use this little brush to sort of get it into the grooves and stuff. The guy said we weren't bad, we just weren't great. That's true. And you run the brush straight up, right? Yep. Because you don't want to bend any of your coils, you just want to keep them nice and straight. How's that brush looking? Is it getting black? A little bit, yeah. This should help the air conditioner run a little bit more efficiently as well. Make sure you get to the bottom if you can. I'm going to need a different brush for that. I'll give you a toothbrush. Would that help? Yeah. All right. I'll go get one. So the other reason we're doing this is we're going to be heading south after our Vermont rally. And we know from experience that once you head south, even if it's in October, that you might need your air conditioning. And you always like it when you're doing a maintenance task and a maintenance professional like the one who installed our micro air easy start says you know what you should do this every year and it's been 20 years and we've never done it so. <laughs> that's true but actually i asked how it looked to him and he said it didn't look too too bad yeah, so it's, it's probably because we never really used our air conditioning yeah, a whole lot he said if you're if you're full timing you should do this twice a year and if you're just doing it on the weekends or just on a more casual basis. He said well, at least I once. Getting, I hate getting up on the Airstream so much that even if I'm full timing, I'm doing this once a year. Do you have to do it inside and out or just kind of on the outside? I did it on the inside. We're gonna go ahead and clean the cover. And remember, the reason you clean things when you're doing maintenance is not so much that you are just trying to make things look pretty because that's part of it, but you're also trying to make sure to detect anything that's abnormal. Like you're looking for cracks and stuff, right? You won't be able to detect leaks or things like that if your engine is filthy. That's why you keep a clean engine. That's why you can see here the pattern as to where the coils are. You can see the coils sit right along here. So you want to make sure that that area remains clean. All right. And that there's not anything unusual. So yeah. we're going to go ahead and clean it up. Sounds like good.
It is definitely easier cleaning this air conditioner cover when it's sitting down here than when it's up there. Oh, definitely. Definitely. This is going to be awkward. That's why it helps doing this with a friend. Got it? Okay, yep. All right, that task is done for the next 20 years, I think. <laughs> All right, well, it didn't look that bad. Always a good idea to check your rivets all while you're up here. Looks good. Looks good. It's another 90 degree day here in Vermont, so what a perfect time to test out our air conditioner to see if it'll work off of our Honda generator since having our Micro Air Easy Start installed. So let's go ahead and get that puppy fired up and let's go ahead and see if it works. Now, why is it questionable whether it might work or not? Uh, the amperage, as you can tell, the, the starting amperage was around 16.7, which I'm not sure that's about what that thing's rated to. I think, you know, we've got an older Honda EU 2000 versus the newer Honda EU 2200. So um, it could be right at the limit at which that starting voltage does with a 2000 watt inverter, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll see. All right, we'll test it out. What will happen if it doesn't work? It'll trip the breaker at the, uh, generator there. So it won't hurt the, the air conditioner, right? Nope. All right. Just making sure. Well, the breaker here says 20 amps, so we should be good at R16. Let's go ahead and get it started. Now, Honda one start pull. Now that's eco mode, which will be really super quiet. And that's normally what we run it on. But I think for this test, I'm going to take it off eco mode. I'm going to let it run it up to speed. So question, do you, you don't ever put your surge protector on your generator, correct? No, you can't because it's not grounded. If you do so, you're going to get an open ground with your surge protector and it won't let power flow. So you can buy this little plug on Amazon, but it doesn't make things any safer. It just fools your surge protector into thinking it's grounded. But, you know, I'm not too worried about a huge voltage spike or anything with the generator. Uh, so yeah, I just don't run with my surge protector. Good question. All right, so give it a shot. There goes nothing. We didn't blow a fuse. And out here, it's sounding a little bit louder, but that's probably to be expected. Oh yeah, that's working great. And you can see we dropped from 124 to 122 volt. Now, on my phone here, I have the Easy Start app. So I can connect to Easy Start. So it's connected, so now I can check my status. And you can see, see that last start peak was at 19.9, so it just barely got started up. The current is running at 11.6 now and that will usually go down. Normally that last peak start is around 16. It's, yeah. it's cool. I mean, but again, it has a little bit of work to do because it was 90 degrees outside. So yeah, I can actually feel it cooling though. Yep. It's cool, it works. Good. Awesome. All right, well, there we have it. I did some air conditioning maintenance. And I did a little bit of work on the toilet by giving it some lubrication on its seal. And we tested out the Easy Start on the generator, which was interesting, right? Absolutely. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And for now, whenever we um, need a generator for just a quick burst, I can see us using it for, you know, not like for 12 hours or something, but just a quick burst to cool things down, mm -hmm. maybe after maybe. a day of traveling when we're boondocking or something. I think that thing's going to come in handy. Should. So if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And if you think we've earned a subscription, click to subscribe. And comment below if you do in between maintenance during your camping trips and what you do. Because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.